Othello, Chapter One: A Secret Marriage. Two men were hurrying down a dark Venice street. They were Iago, an old soldier, and his friend Rodrigo. Iago was scowling. How dare Othello promote Cassio, not and not me? He said bitterly. I've got twice as much experience. I hate Othello. Rodrigo nodded. I hate Othello too for marrying Desdemona. Iago smiled grimly. Let's see what her father makes of it. Look, here's his house. Iago shouted, and you and old man looked out. Brabantio! Iago greeted him. Your daughter has run off with Othello. No, wailed the old man. I will find them and seek justice from the duke. The Duke of Venice was in his palace discussing war plans when the door burst open. In came Brabantio, pushing Othello and Desdemona before him. This thief has stolen my daughter and married her behind my back. How the Brabantio! He must have used magic, or she would never have married a Moor. His voice dripped hatred. Othello, is this true? Asked the Duke. I have married Desdemona, answered Othello proudly. But there was no magic except for love. I told her the story of my life, of my escape from slavery, the battles I fought, the strange sights I have seen, and she sighed to hear it. The Duke smiled. Then we should accept this marriage," he declared. "Desdemona, what about your duty?" cried Brabantio. "Father, I am your daughter," answered Desdemona softly. "But Othello is my husband, and I must show him the same duty that my mother showed you." Now to business," the Duke went on. I hear Turkish forces are planning to attack Cyprus. Othello, you must take charge of our fortress there. Leave tonight. Let me come with you, Desdemona begged Othello. You can sail with Iago and the supplies. He replied, kissing her hand as everyone laughed. Along again with Iago, Rodrigo gave a huge sign. If I've lost Desdemona, I may as well drown myself. Nonsense! Snorted Iago. That marriage will never last. I can fix it if you can find the money. Rodrigo trotted off obediently. Fool! Iago thought to himself. Your money will pay for my revenge. Cassio is a good-looking man. I'll make it seem that Desdemona loves him. Chapter Two: Celebration in Cyprus. Huge waves and wild winds lashed the shore of Cyprus. Most of the ships from Venice had arrived safely, but Othello's was missing, delayed by the storm. Desdemona waited anxiously. When Othello finally appeared, she rushed into his arms. Othello turned to his troops. "Good news," he announced. "All the Turkish ships sank in the storm, and I am married. Let there be dancing and feasting and bonfires tonight to celebrate." Time to make trouble," thought Iago slyly. "Now where's Cassio?" Iago found Cassio on his way to the fort. "Have some wine with me," he said. Not tonight," replied Cassio. "I've a poor head for drink." "Nonsense," persisted Iago. "It's a special occasion." "Just one then," agreed Cassio, allowing Iago to pull him into a nearby tavern. Each time Cassio tried to pull down his glass, Iago filled it for another toast. "To General Othello." Eventually, Cassio staggered off in the direction of the fort. Cassio would be a great officer, Iago remarked loudly to everyone around him. If only he wasn't such a drunkard.
There were shouts in the street outside, on Iago's instructions. Rodrigo had insulted Cassio. Then Rodrigo ran into the tavern with Cassio in hot pursuit. Stop! Laughed a soldier, catching Cassio's arm. You are drunk. Drunk? Roared Cassio, waving his fists. I'll give you drunk. Iago smiled as they began to fight. Time to fetch Othello, he thought. Othello was furious to find his soldiers brawling in public. Stop! He bellowed. Iago, tell me who started this. Iago pretended to hesitate. I won't blame Cassio. He must have been provoked. Othello nodded curtly. Cassio, you are no longer my officer, and with that he left. Cassio bowed his head in despair. Iago put an arm around him. Othello will forgive you if you ask. I couldn't, signed Cassio. Then get Desdemona to ask, suggested Iago. Othello would do anything for her. I will, nodded Cassio. Thank you, honest Iago. Iago watched Cassio go with a cruel smile. Of course, Desdemona will help out of the goodness of her heart. He sneered, but I'll tell Othello it's because she's in love with Cassio. Chapter Three: A Lost Handkerchief. The next morning, Cassio told Desdemona his troubles. She listened gravely before answering. Good Cassio, I'll do everything I can. Look, here comes my husband with Iago. I'll talk to him now. Was that Cassio? Asked Othello as someone darted away. Surely not, said Iago. Cassio would never steal away so guiltily. My lord cried, Desdemona, coming up with a kiss. Will you forgive Cassio? Call him back. Soon, my sweet, laughed Othello. Anything for you, but now I must work. With a smile, Desdemona went. Iago cleared his throat. Does Cassio know Desdemona well? He began. Yes, he carried messages between us before we were married," replied Othello. "Indeed," exclaimed Iago. "What of it?" said Othello, frowning. Iago shook his head doubtfully. "I'd better not say. I might be wrong, and I don't want to make you jealous of your wife." "My wife is virtuous," warned Othello. "I won't doubt her without proof." I've no proof," said Iago. "But she deceived her father, so she may be deceived you. Take my advice. See what happens with Cassio. If she pleads too strongly," he gave Othello a sly look, then strode off. Othello clutched his head. "I won't believe it. What's the matter?" asked Desdemona, coming in. "My head hurts," he snapped. "Let me bind it." She offered, holding out her handkerchief. He pushed it away impatiently and seized her hand. "Come, let's go and eat." The handkerchief lay forgotten on the floor until Amelia found it. "My husband asked me to steal this," she muttered, picking it up. "Oh, Iago!" she called. "I have something for you." "I have something too," he sneered, looking in. A foolish wife. Is that so? Snapped Amelia. Well, what about this? She waved the handkerchief at Iago. His eyes gleamed as he snatched it. Why do you want it? Asked Amelia. None of your business, growled Iago. But inwardly he was grinning. This is my proof, he thought. I'll drop it in Cassio's room. The Moor is already jealous. When he sees Cassio with Desdemona's handkerchief, his blood will burn. Chapter Four: Othello's Proof. Othello glared at Iago. "Give me proof that Desdemona has betrayed me," he said, "or feel my anger." 
world. Take note, signed Iago. This is my reward for being honest. Othello rubbed his eyes. By the world, I think my wife is honest, and I think she is not. I think you are right, and think you are not. I must have proof. Last night, I heard Cassio moan in his sleep. Sweet Desdemona, let us hide our love," said Iago. "And does she have a handkerchief embroidered with strawberries? My first gift to her," groaned Othello. "I saw Cassio use a handkerchief like that to wipe his chin." Othello's face grew murderous. A few rooms away, Desdemona was searching for the handkerchief. Amelia, have you seen it? I'd rather lose a pursuit of gold than that. She straightened up as Othello came striding in. My lord, Othello took her hand and stroked it. This is a good hand. It was the hand which gave away my heart. She said softly. Now, will you call for Cassio? First, lend me your handkerchief," said Othello. "The one I gave you. I don't have it on me," she said. "That's bad," growled Othello. "It has magic in it. If it is lost or given away, terrible things will follow. Bring it to me." "Why do you speak so roughly?" whispered Desdemona. Then she laughed. You are trying to distract me. It won't work. Please call Cassio. The handkerchief! Roared Othello, storming out. Othello seems jealous, said Amelia wonderingly. But why? A footstep made her look up. Iago, what's the matter? Asked Iago, full of pretend concern. So Desdemona exclaimed, "I'll talk to Othello." He offered. When she finished, perhaps something else has upset him. I hope you are right, thought Amelia. Meanwhile, Cassio was showing the handkerchief to a girl he knew. Look, Bianca, isn't it pretty? A woman's handkerchief? Bianca pouted. I suppose it was a gift from your girlfriend. No, I found it. Cassio laughed. Can you make a copy for me? All right, agreed Bianca, but only if you promise to visit me soon. She blew Cassio a kiss and danced away. Othello was watching their exchange from his window, a wild look in his eye. Look, he croaked to Iago. Cassio's got the handkerchief. Iago nodded. I suppose Desdemona gave it to him. What else did she give him? Asked Othello in a strangled voice. Hmm," said Iago, pretending to hesitate. What if I had seen Cassio kiss her, or heard him blab about what they've done? What did she say? Growled Othello. Is it possible? Did he confess? Iago nodded. In every detail, Othello clutched his head. My lord, are you all right? Listen, I know a way you can hear it for yourself. Just hide up here, Cassio. Iago shouted, running down into the street. How are things going with Desdemona? He sidled closer and hissed it softly, so no one else heard. Now, if it was Bianca, things would move more swiftly. Cassio laughed at Bianca's name. Poor thing, I think she loves me. How dare he laugh at Desdemona? Fumed Othello in his hiding place. She says you will marry her. Iago continued. Is that true? Still thinking of Bianca, Cassio laughed even harder. I'm not going to marry her. She made it up. She's such a flirt. Always calling me dear Cassio and flinging her arms around me, he strode off, chuckling to himself. When Iago returned, Othello was ranting like a lunatic. I'll kill Cassio and Desdemona. My heart is turned to stone. I'll poison her. 
Then he imagined her dead, and his face softened. Oh, Iago, the pity of it! Strangle her tonight, urged Iago coldly. I'll see to Cassio. Chapter Five: Murder in Cyprus. Othello strode into the fort to find his officers, and Desdemona gathered around a messenger from Venice named Lodovico. Greetings," said Lodovico. "The Duke has sent me to bring Othello home. Cassio can take care of the fort. How is he?" Othello shrugged. "My lord and Cassio have fallen out," exclaimed Desdemona sadly. As she spoke, Cassio's name something in Othello snapped. "Out of my sight!" he snarled, striking her. Desdemona clutched her stinging cheek and laughed, her eyes brimming. "So Cassio has my place," snorted Othello. "Has he lost his mind?" exclaimed Lord Vico, staring after him. Othello had gone to question the servant. Amelia about Desdemona's meetings with Cassio. You never saw anything suspicious. Amelia shook her head. No, nor heard nor suspected anything. She insisted. Desdemona is a faithful wife, but her words fell on deaf ears. Bring her here, Othello ordered. You caught for me, my lord. Said Desdemona softly, coming in. Othello stared into her clear blue eyes. What are you? She gazed back at him. You are true and a loyal wife. Heaven knows. Heaven knows you are false. How? She begged. What is my sin? Aren't you a hollered? No! Cried Desdemona, shocked. For a moment. Othello almost believed her. Then he remembered Iago's sneers and Cassio's laughter. "I'm sorry," he said, his words dripping sarcasm. "I thought you were that hollered who married Othello," and he stormed out. Desdemona wept. "What's all this?" said Iago, looking in. "My lord called her a hollered," exclaimed Amelia. Did she give up her family, friends, and country to be called such names? Iago did his best to look surprised. Why? He asked. Desdemona shook her head. Heaven knows, she sniffed. I bet my life some knave has been telling lies. Put in Amelia. May he be hanged for it. Quiet fool! Snarled Iago. He turned to Desdemona. I expect something else has upset him, and he's taking it out on you. Don't cry; all will be well. Desdemona and Amelia had barely left when Rodrigo came running in. Iago, he snapped, "I've given you enough jewels to win any girl, and you say Desdemona will meet me, but she never comes." Very well," signed Iago. "It is not very well," howled Rodrigo. "She must give back my jewels, or I will set the account with you, Iago." Iago laughed. "Be brave! I'll bring you together. But Othello is mean to take her home tomorrow. We need to make her stay." Rodrigo scratched his head. "What do you suggest? Knock out Cassio's brains?" Said Iago coldly. So Othello can't hand over the fort to him. Listen. After dinner, Othello told Desdemona to go straight to bed and send her servant away. Send me away! cried Am Amelia, dismayed. It was his command," said Desdemona, looking pale. "Please help me to change and put my wedding sheets on the bed." She paused, remembering his murderous stare. If I should die, wrap me in those sheets, and let nobody blame him. She began to hum a strange, sad song. She stopped abruptly. Are there really women who betray their husbands? Amelia nodded. Some, I'm sure. I wouldn't. I didn't think any woman could. 
said Desdemona. "Would you for all the world? The world is a great prize," sighed Amelia. "Anyway, I blame the husbands." Outside in the dark, Iago and Rodrigo were waiting for Cassio. Footsteps approached. "Villain, die!" shouted Rodrigo, waving a dagger. Cassio dodged. Drew his own sword and thrust it at Rodrigo, who collapsed. Then Cassio collapsed too. Iago had stabbed him from behind, and vanished into the shadows. Help! Yelled Cassio. Murder! Iago reappeared, holding a lantern. What's all this noise? Help! Begged Cassio. I was attacked. He pointed at Rodrigo. "Villain!" cried Iago, finishing off Rodrigo. He was tempted to do the same for Cassio, but too many people were appearing, drawn by the shouts. So he melted away, grinning to himself. Chapter six. Put out the light. Othello walked softly into Desdemona's room, asleep. She looked so beautiful and so innocent. I won't shed her blood, he thought. Yet she betrayed me. She must die. He reached for the candle by the bed, unable to help himself. He kissed her. Her eyes fluttered open. Othello, she whispered. Desdemona, he sighed. Have you prayed tonight? I will not kill you unprepared. You talk of killing. Quivered Desdemona, "Heaven have mercy, Amen." Growled Othello, reaching for a pillow. "I never wronged you," she pleaded. "I saw Cassio with your handkerchief, heard him confess. Send for him. He won't say so." "No," snarled Othello. "He won't. Iago is killing him." "Alas," whimpered Desdemona. Let me live. Let me say a prayer. Too late," said Othello sternly. He pushed the pillow over her face and held it there until she stopped struggling. Someone pounded on the door. Slowly, he stood and unlocked it. It was Amelia. My lord, Cassio has killed Rodrigo. Cassio lives. Said Othello in surprise, falsely murdered. Came a whisper from the bed. Desdemona was not quite dead. I die guiltless. Alas, my lady! Wailed Amelia, rushing to her side. Who did this? No one. Said Desdemona faintly. Remember me to my lord. Farewell. Her eyes closed for the last time. She lied. Said Othello curtly, "I killed her because she betrayed me. Your husband told me." "My husband?" gasped Amelia. "He lies! Help! Murder!" A group of soldiers came running. Iago among them. Amelia's eyes blazed to see him. "Your lies have led to murder." She turned to Othello. "You have killed the sweetest innocent that ever lived." Othello shook his head. She was false. Iago knows. Cassio confessed to him. She even gave Cassio her handkerchief. Amelia snorted. I found the handkerchief and gave it to Iago. Before she could say more, Iago lunged at her with his sword, then fled, pursued by the soldiers. I die. Signed Amelia, feeling her wound. With effort, her eyes found Othello's. She was faithful. She loved you, Caru Moor. Othello's eyes filled with tears as he gazed down at his wife's body. Devils take me from this heavenly side and roast me in hellfire. Desdemona, dead. <laughs> The soldiers returned, dragging Iago. Behind them came more men supporting the injured Cassio, followed by Lodovico, the Duke's messenger. 
Oh, fellow, what can we say to you? Signed Lodovico. Anything, answered Othello. At least say I acted not out of hate, but jealous love. I never gave you reason to be jealous, insisted Cassio. I believe it, groaned Othello. Forgive me. Tell me, how did you get the handkerchief? I found it in my room, said Cassio. Iago put it there, and he told Rodrigo to kill me. We found a letter to prove it. Othello rounded on Iago. Devil! Why have you done this? What you know, you know, spat Iago. From now on, I will say nothing. He pressed his lips together, his face twisted with hate. Then Lodwico spoke. A fellow, I strip you of your command. We must return to Venice. Cassio shall stay here to govern the fort, and Iago shall remain his prisoner. A word before you go, begged Othello. When you tell this sad story, be truthful. Say I loved not wisely, but too well. Say I killed the one who killed Desdemona. Before anyone could stop him. He buried a dagger in his old chest. Slowly, he sank down beside his wife, brushing her cheek with his lips. Othello's hand dropped from the dagger. He was dead. Lord Vico gazed down at the bodies. Othello's dusky face buried in Desdemona's golden hair, and blinked back a tear. This is your work. Lord Vico told Iago sternly, "And you shall pay the price. No punishment is too harsh. Now I must sail for Venice alone."